so the question is, what do you, what, um, how, how do you know? Balance out, of balance. out of balance. Okay. Well, certainly the age and stage of the, of the patient. Um, if it's a man, um, th there's, you know, there's so testosterone, obviously. testosterone, and then it starts to, you know, go out, go down, and so that's that's fairly obvious. But they can have thyroid, DHEA deficiency, uh, high cortisol. Um, so we look at, it, you know, each patient is individual. So we really look at so their... Well, when I'm talking about functional medicine, we're talking about we look at the digestion, we look at the sleep, um, we look at their what's going on in their life, um, if they're stressed, if they're depressed, um, we look at their activity, um, and then we look at the hormones. So depending on male or, or female. Um, it's pretty complex. It is complex, yes, yes. <laughs> And a lot of the, the symptoms of low testosterone, low estrogen, <clears throat> low thyroid, you know, they overlap. <clears throat> so um, almost everybody with any complaint of fatigue or pain, I'm going to do a thyroid, you know, do their thyroid functions. If they're around the stage of perimenopause, menopause, andropause, I'm going to do testosterone levels in men, and I'm going to do um, you know, the hormone levels in women. Uh, Again, the estrogen and progesterone levels are okay to check for blood work, but they may vary. To determine if a woman is in true menopause, actually to check their pituitary hormones, FSH and LH, and that will tell us if they're hairy or, or menopause. And then we'll go from there. So, um, so Genova helps a lot. Genova helps. Um, and again, what I get from Genova is how you're metabolizing it. So I will check it in even women that are still having periods, you know, pre-menopause, pre um, to see how they're metabolizing it. So, you're welcome. But I would advise, recommend, I recommend to all my patients to read The Female Brain and The Male Brain um, by this, these are books, uh, she also wrote The Teen Brain, <clears throat> written by uh, Dr. Luann Bresendine. We actually have The Male Brain and The Female Brain <clears throat> in our lobby. You want to take a look. Uh, she's a neuropsychiatrist who runs a hormone clinic in San Francisco, and she they're great books. She starts, I'll just give you a little synopsis. So the female brain starts from in utero. The babies are, the brains are the same at eight weeks, and then the male brains get flooded with testosterone. By the time they're born, they're completely different. So this is a female because she has what's called mutual gaze. She's able to look at eyes. She can read faces. Boys are like this. <laughs> really, and I, I know when I had my son, I was like, what is this? I, had, I never had grew up with brothers. I, I, what is this? <laughs> you know, he was like all over the place. So this is, this is a girl baby, and she's like gazing at her mother, at her, the eyes, and they were, so by the time Babies are, girl babies are born, they can read faces, and boys are looking around the environment. And then it goes on from there. So even in young kids, they have testosterone, estrogen. You look at little girls playing, they're kind of playing together, cooperating, and um, kind of making sure everybody's okay, kind of mothering, <laughs> mothering uh, each other. Boys, rough and tumble, competition, one-upmanship, beating each other up, tearing everything up, right? <laughs> so then, then you go on to teenage years. Well, girls are, you know, huge levels of estrogen, which stimulate. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a whole nother talk that I do <laughs> called the female brain. So we happen to have some of these. But the, yeah, this is a teenage girl. So they have surges of, of oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. And they bond with each other. And if you look at, like, from caveman, cave woman, why women had to protect themselves and each other. And so they bonded together and they protected their young. You know, they protected against those males. The males are out, like, you know, killing each other or they're, you know, they're fighting or they're, you know, rolling around or wrestling or, you know. And then, 
so girls, so in teenage years, they're in very different spheres. And remember the amygdala? Those amygdalas are huge in boys. So fear, aggression, sexual thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> then gradually, girls and boys, they have this oxytocin, um, you know, they attraction, and they have this feel-good hormone, oxytocin and dopamine. So these are some of the hormones that are produced in the, in the, the brain. And then they have children. And a, by the way, this is kind of interesting. The um, pheromones from a pregnant woman cause the testosterone to drop in men. And they have an increase in something called vasopressin, which is their bonding hormone. So when babies are born, that's the men have this surge of, oxy of uh, vasopressin. And that bonds them with their, their babies. And women have, the, again, a surge of oxytocin intensely protective of, of their children, of their babies, and this oxytocin continues on until the children start to separate and the levels start to come down, and then we're in menopause, and then it's like we're done, <laughs> and done raising kids, you know. So it all works together. Uh, testosterone, men, you know, that is, uh, they find that that starts to, you know, they start to kind of get more mellowed out as testosterone levels drop down. Um, and so it's all kind of a natural process. But we can kind of help things along by supplementation. So, so that's kind of a synopsis. But there, I love that the books are great. She uses her patients as, as uh, uh, examples. And it's, they're, they're very humorous and, and fun to read. So I'd highly recommend it. And everybody's got males and females in their life. Um, if you have teenagers in your life, then you know both of those books touch on the teenage years, but she also did write The Teenage Brain as well. So, so uh, one more question. That's OK. Um, what could cause uh, someone, I am 27, to mm -hmm. have FSH and LH levels that are far beyond that of a postmenopausal woman? And if so, Well, um, <clears throat> there's something called early ovarian failure. Yeah. Such a not, a, not a nice term, but um, we don't really know why that can happen. But obviously, it's very important in a young person, if that occurs, is to make sure that you do have enough estrogen progesterone because there's so many things that um, may increase the risk of osteoporosis and so many other things that you want, that you need to support. And so, um, you know, we don't know why why that occurs, um, but making sure that you you take healthy hormones um, is also very important. And I think it would be a good idea for for someone that is taking those hormones to maybe do the Genova test to make sure you're metabolizing it the way you should to keep your keep it healthy. <laughs>